give you an update now on the uh, latest coronavirus statistics in South Africa. 21,606 new positive cases have been recorded since the last report. And now that brings the cumulative number of cases that have been recorded to 1,214,176. The number of COVID-related fatalities in South Africa, sadly, has risen by 399. And that brings the total number of deaths to 32,000. 824. According to the Department of Health, just under 957,000 people have recovered from the infection, with over 77,000 new tests being conducted in the last 24 hours. The COVID-19 second wave in South Africa continues to break records. In recent days, new cases have topped 20,000 per day. And it's being reported that right now scientists believe that the new coronavirus strain identified in South Africa is more transmissible than earlier variants. The new variant has uh, all provinces scrambling to manage the pandemic whilst the country awaits the rollout of a vaccine. South Africa has announced that the first one and a half million doses of the uh, coronavirus vaccines will arrive this month and uh, next month uh, to protect frontline workers in the first instance. Well, to discuss this, we're now joined uh, via Zoom by family physician, Dr. Fundile Nyati. Uh, thanks so much indeed for joining us, uh, Dr. Nyati. Welcome to the program. Good evening, uh, Peter, and good evening uh, to the viewers. 21,000 is the average number of the last few days, and that's pretty scary what we're seeing. Yes, it is. It is actually, you know, this is a week where we are breaking our own records, uh, whether we're looking at new in confirmed infections. Uh, so this is the fourth day, basically, that we are averaging about 21,000 new infections, um, you know, and uh, that is not uh, good news uh, probably for the country. But also, we've also broken records in terms of the number of deaths you know, uh, in a single day, I mean, uh, yesterday we had about 616, you know, uh, people dying uh, in one day. That was a record. We've never reached 616 in any one day. Uh, and what one is seeing, you know, when it comes to the deaths, is that there is no province that, uh, you know, has been spared in terms of the deaths. Um, and so we really are in a serious situation as a country. And there are provinces a large provinces, uh, you know, or a province like KwaZulu Natal, um, you know, it, 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 you know, it used to be within the top four provinces in terms of infections. Uh, right now, in terms of just the total number, they are actually at a number two, you know, um, you know, just after Gauteng, uh, ahead of Eastern Cape and ahead, you know, of uh, 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 Western Cape. So I think. Uh, you know, we are still going to see more difficulties, you know, in provinces like Eastern Cape. Also, a province like the Northwest, we're starting to see a lot of new infections coming out there and even deaths. And a province like Limpopo, which had the lowest number of infections before, uh, you know, before uh, the second wave, uh, it's also starting to see a lot of numbers, you know, uh, of new infections and also deaths. So, yes, we are in the grip of the second wave, and this new variant seems to be causing a lot of havoc out there. All right. You mentioned the uh, new variant. Is it just that, or do you think that people's behavior has contributed significantly to this as well? Well, uh, I think there's no one uh, reason for what we are seeing. On one side, you know, the preventative measures you know, that we are all supposed to observe. Um, we have not been doing well. You know, uh, yes, the president, I heard him saying there's more people who are wearing masks. But, uh, you know, my visit to some of the townships or even some of the malls, you know, uh, I spent some time in Cape Town as well these last few days. Uh, you still have a lot of people who do not, uh, you know, wear the mask or if they wear them, they don't wear them correctly. You know, so the nose is outside, you know, uh, or others, it's just a chin guard. So uh, there's still an issue of attitude and behavior to adherence 
to the preventative measures. So that's one one thing. But yes, uh, the virus itself, the new variant, uh, you know, it's more infectious. Uh, you know, anecdotally, we think it's much more aggressive, but scientifically, it's not yet been proven to be most, you know, to more aggressive than the previous ones. So yes, we have a problem. But I think we must also uh, mention certain positives, even if they are small positives. When one looks at the trends of the new infections, um, Western Cape and the Eastern Cape that have been having the most number of infections, uh, we're starting to see a plateau, you know, uh, you know, uh, in those two provinces, which is something that's encouraging because there's been tighter regulations in those two provinces, and I think we're starting to see, you know, the effects of that. But the other provinces uh, that were not considered hotspots. Uh, I think people, you know, did not really adhere as much to the uh, regulations, and we are seeing lots of infections that are coming up here, Northwest, you know, uh, Limpopo, uh, uh, and Free State as well, you know. So uh, we are in a serious situation. Well, one of the things that uh, is coming up more and more, um, yesterday I had a conversation with uh, uh, somebody who works in security. And she was concerned that we'd shut down churches because she believed that this uh, coronavirus is of the devil and that the uh, churches must be opened and so that they can go. And it really starts pointing towards people's beliefs and culture. We're seeing uh, people defy some of these issues to make sure that their cultural practices continue to, to be uh, 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 carried out. And I just wonder if you can talk to us about how we can balance this desperate need for us to fulfill our cultural practices, but at the same time, we're in the grips of a modern pandemic. Well, you know, it, it's actually said that uh, people uh, are putting culture before lives. Uh, you know, in the province where I come from, which is the Eastern Cape, you know, um, the whole issue of traditional, uh, you know, initiations uh, has been a bone of contention. You know, whether, you know, the government should lift the ban or not, and eventually the government lifted the ban, uh, with the exception of the Nelson Mandela Bay. But what we are seeing then now is that uh, we are picking up a lot of infections you know, within those initiation schools, uh, and also when there are these homecoming ceremonies, uh, the numbers are not always within the 50, you know, max that people are supposed to have, and the people who attend those uh, are not always adhering to social distancing and the use of masks. Uh, well, I'm not sure about, uh, you know, the use of alcohol, whether it is being used or not, you know, uh, traditional beer and stuff like that. So, yes, uh, I think, uh, you know, bodies, uh, traditional leader bodies like Contra Lessa should come to the fore and actually lead in terms of ensuring that the headmen, the chiefs and the kings actually play a much more constructive role. Their voice has not been, you know, uh, 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 it has been missing when it comes to issues of cultural practices. So I think it is important that the government engages that critical, you know, uh, stakeholder, uh, so that we can be able to save lives. There is nothing wrong in the past. You know, there, 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 there were situations where a king would then say, you know, there will be no circumcisions, you know, if maybe there is a death, you know, in the royal house. Uh, or sometimes, you know, where there were pandemics, the kings would actually issue directives. So the question is, why is it that that is not happening now? One also starts to think that there are a lot of people who are making money out of these cultural practices, either as traditional surgeons or as traditional nurses. And for them, you know, uh, it is an economic issue to actually have these, you know, taking place. But that is happening at the expense of the lives of the young people who are there, you know, as part of the cultural practices. And when it comes to religion, it is becoming a big issue here in South Africa, uh, especially when it comes to the issue of, um, you know, vaccine hesitancy. Uh, you know, we are seeing a lot uh, of people who are spreading a lot of conspiracy theories uh, or other religious-inspired, you know, theories 
around COVID-19 itself as a disease or the you know vaccination programs that are coming. And it is very important that uh, you know uh, the public health education is actually increased uh, to counter uh, the you know the, the, the lot of misinformation that is out there. But again, the stakeholders, you know, that is SACC and other religious bodies, they also need to be engaged for them to understand that, you know, uh, this is a matter, you know, of, uh, you know, life and death. Uh, and, you know, it is not just about one being physically in a religious building. You know, you can still be able to pray to God, even if you are in your home. So I think, uh, you know, uh, if we don't counter these, you know, uh, 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 utterances from some of the people who see uh, the closure of the churches or the reduction in the number of churches as something that is hampering their, 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 their spirituality, then we're going to have a problem. So uh, I would like to see our government engaging further with those critical stakeholders. All right, and it's on that that we'll leave it for this evening. Dr. Fundele Nyati, family physician, thanks so much indeed for joining us on the program. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to the viewers. All right, okay, so that's uh, Dr. Fundele Nyati, who's a family physician, taking us through his thoughts as uh, 21,000 is the number that's uh, coming up every single day now as uh, recorded new infections, and sadly, the number of deaths are also increasing. So we really do need to take care and be cognizant as we uh, want to hold on to these uh, traditional cultural beliefs uh, that there is a modern pandemic that needs to be dealt with and uh, prioritize. We'll have more for you after the break.